Welcome to History Adventuring. This is episode number 421. I'm Brad Hall, and today we're looking at being a witchy woman in Old Time Phoenix. I just finished watching Room on the Broom, which is on Netflix, and I enjoyed the animation and the wonderful little story. It also got me to thinking about Old Time Phoenix and being a witchy woman. I think that I can answer most questions about why we have an image of a witch which looks the way that it does, and for stuff I can't, I'm hoping that you can help me out here. Well, let's time travel to Old Time Phoenix a little over a hundred years ago, and if you have no objection, you're going to be a witchy woman. I'm going to start with something that's very confusing nowadays to both men and women of <clears throat> age, and that's thinness. A witchy woman was thin. Nowadays, of course, thin is in. All of my life, women have wanted to be as thin as possible. When I was a kid, a popular model was so thin that she called herself Twiggy. But before that, thin was kind of creepy, and being a bit plump was a sign of robust health. And a lot of women who had lived a long time were not in that kind of health. Like I say, this is hard for us to imagine now, but women didn't want to be Twiggy back in the days of Old Time Phoenix that we're visiting. So to be a witchy woman in Old Time Phoenix, you would have to be rail thin. Your thinness might also be caused by something that younger people hadn't experienced as much of, losing teeth. There's a reason why the stereotypical witch has a jutting chin. That's what happens when you lose all, or almost all, of your teeth. And another thing that happens naturally with age is that your nose continues to grow. Speaking for myself, I've never had a small nose, and it seems to get more prominent every day. And since I figure that I have another 20 or 30 years of life, I'll be watching my nose grow. The witch in the illustration there has something on her nose. It could be a mole, it could be a wart, it could be a pimple. These things happen. Of course, you're going to have a broom. Women tend to keep their houses clean, and brooms were once made like that. And even if there was a newer model, uh, older people tend to stick with what they know and what they like. The shawl would be there to keep her shoulders warm, and her dress would be ragged because, well, she probably couldn't afford a new dress or to have it repaired. Note the shoes, which were typical of the turn of the century and late 1800s. When this witchy woman was young, they were in style. Of course, as a witchy woman, you will need a kettle, and your secret recipes would fire the imagination of the kids in the neighborhood. Probably magic potions. The cat is a nice touch. Still, I have to admit that I'm stuck on the reason for the witch's hat. No Halloween costume of a witch is complete without it, and it could be a wizard's hat, but I can't explain the brim. If you know, please tell me. Also, the red hair puzzles me. My hair started going gray in my 30s and was completely gray by my late 40s. Did women used to color their hair back then? I have no idea. Well, thank you for being a witchy woman. This has been History Adventuring. I'll talk to you later.